review of the Victory Road pay-per-view, but it will not be the review because I was there live. So, and I don't like doing a complete review of a live event because it's completely different when you were there live. Either sometimes it comes off better on TV than it did there live, and sometimes it comes off far worse than it did. So, I don't like doing them live, but I thought that I would come on here and talk about actually being at a, at a TNA event because I did go to Victory Road, and... First time I've ever been to a TNA show, and I thought I would just give my impressions of what I saw and what I didn't see and all of those types of things. So, let's get started here. Um, got to the show about 5 o'clock, I guess. Uh, set outside for about 30 minutes. <clears throat> Watched in the heat, which was not fun. Um, if you know anything about Texas, not good. About 95 degrees, I bet. Uh... So, when we got inside, the air conditioning was pretty nice, but uh, looking around, it was not your typical, I would say, not the typical fan base that I have seen over the years at major shows. This is the first major show I've probably been to in about a year, well over a year, actually. Um, it's been the first major show since I started actually being here, so uh, I think the show, I, had, I was on, I can't remember which show, but this is the first pay-per-view I've been doing forever. But, um... Definitely, I, I would say, a much younger crowd, and when I say that, I don't mean a bunch of little kids, though there were kids there. Uh, what I mean by, when you go to like a WWE show, you usually see, you know, pretty good, I, I would say 50 and under, and, and not all of those that are probably, you know, 35 to 50 are there with their kids. Sometimes they're just, just lifelong wrestling fans um, that, that go with their wives or whatever. And um, that was not the case here. I would say that the majority of people were probably uh, 35 and younger. <clears throat> I mean, anybody, you know, I would say that we're in their 40s were probably there with their kids, um, though you had a lot of people there with their kids, which I guess is to be expected. I, uh, once the, once we got set down and to the show and the show was about to start, I'd say there was probably about 5,000 people there. I wouldn't be shocked if more tickets were actually sold than people that were there because there were huge sections of seats which I knew by being online were supposed to be sold out there wasn't anybody there so even though I know some of that's giveaway stuff uh, I would also imagine that scalpers probably had something to do with that as well uh, we got inside right when we went inside um, while we were there uh, Booker T's PWA or Booker T's promotion uh, was giving out flyers um, talking about, you know, their shows and, and they come see them and everything. So that, that, was, that was good for them, I, I think, though uh, a couple people had told me uh, once I got inside that uh, they had been selling or, or had been promoting the TNA, the pay-per-view, for a while on Booker T's show, which told me right there that Booker was probably going to have a big, big fan. A lot of a big fan support for the show, also him being in Houston. And being from Houston, which uh, turned out to be the case. So that wasn't such a big stretch, now was it? I got inside uh, right away. Uh, the kiosks were there. Uh, pretty much everything you can buy from the TNA shop were there that I saw. Uh, the only thing difference was there were a couple of, like, I, I would say TNA-made banner signs type of thing. One was TNA, TNA, and, and I, I can't remember what the other one said, uh, to be honest. You could buy that. You buy pretty much everything. Of course, the pay-per-view deal was only at the pay-per-view, and it was the Samoa Joe Booker T uh, autographed poster. <clears throat> um, there was that. Um, I got this shirt. This is a Motor City Machine Gun shirt. You can't tell. I also got the TNA program. I don't know if people are going to ask that they sell, which is which is similar. Well, uh, that's too far away. Um, which looks like the uh, New Japan program I got from the TNA Global Impact deal. Uh, not as big, but just as nice. Very good. Thumbs up for TNA for that because it is an excellent, excellent thing. And I, I haven't seen the WWE one from WrestleMania. I would imagine it's probably similar. I would hope. Uh, though I do plan on getting it at some point, so we'll find out. Uh, let's see. From there, we, went and we got our seats. Um, I was on the floor, but I was about 10, 10 rows back. Back, which is, is pretty good ways you can't that far back you can't exactly see uh well that's no good uh you can't exactly see the uh the the, the floor you know if the floor you can definitely see the ring i had, had a pretty good vantage point of the ring from where i was 
Um, I did meet Bill and Doug while I was there, and a lot of people are going to ask that. I, I did meet them. I saw them sitting in their seats. I walked over, introduced myself. Uh, we talked about the pay-per-view, the fact that I, all three of us agreed that on paper the pay-per-view looked really good. Uh, they thought they, they said it was a little gimmick-happy. I, I kind of agreed, but I, I didn't think it was too bad considering a TNA, you know, event, and I, I figured the, uh, the Ultimate X stuff, you know, I, I was happy to see the guys we were going to see in the Ultimate X stuff, so that was, that was good to see, too. Um, they opened the show about 6.30, um, with, uh, the singing of the, with, you know, the intros and all that, uh, they had, uh, who did they have singing the National Anthem? I can't even remember now. Oh, uh, Willie Nelson's daughter, who, she did an okay job, I would say. I, ha I hate saying that because anytime anybody sings in front of a lot of people, that's more power to them. But it was just kind of okay. Um, then they had uh, Jeremy Borash came out. He hyped up the crowd like we. Like it's always been reported, and I finally got to see it live. You know, they do tell the fans, you know, get up, be loud. Uh, we will notice you, and you'll be able to go backstage. <coughs> go backstage. They gave out a bunch of backstage passes while we were sitting there. They uh, also had Kevin Nash come out. Him do a little bit of an intro. Um, Kevin Nash was actually when we walked in, he was off in his own little kiosk uh, doing um, pictures with people. Uh, while we were outside, Jay Lethal and SoCal Val were doing pictures as well, which was kind of cool to see. That's not something you normally see at a WWE event. Um, let's see what else was going on during all that. I guess that's uh, that's pretty much the intro of the show, and then they then the pay per view started. Um, you know, from what we saw, the, the, the thing that I would say is, is from a production standpoint, it was some, and it was something that I noticed. It wasn't something I was looking for flaws of things. There were just something that I just noticed right away was, I'm sure everyone has seen the TNA screens when they do the pay-per-views. That's pretty much all they use them for. They don't actually put the matches or anything up there. And during the pay-per-view, um, every once in a while when they went to the floor, the wrestlers were on the floor, then they would switch and they would show what was going on the floor up on the screens, but not all the time, and it wasn't consistent. And I don't know if there's a reason. There might be a reason, and I don't know what it is, um, that they don't show the matches up on those screens like the WWE does with the Titantron, where you know you can pretty much watch the whole show on the Titantron. So that was, I thought, of a bit strange because it was definitely they were able to do it though I'm not sure why they didn't do it so I'm sure there, there's probably a technical reason why and I just don't know what it is but I did find that a little odd I would hope that they would fix that because I, I definitely the people around me I was far enough back like I said I, you couldn't see a lot of stuff that was going on around the ring and I think that took away some of you know the live experience as opposed to if you went to a WWE event and even, I, I would say, some indie events I've seen DVDs on where they've had, you know, some sort of big screen where you could see what was going on. So, there was that. That, that was probably the big first thing I noticed. They did the intro. Um, then they did, of course, the opener. And the opener was freaking amazing. Um, and one of the reasons why I wanted to go to this show after after it was announced was because of the, the, X, uh, the World X Cup. And the World X Cup actually was off to the side of us. Um, so we got to see see it set in there the whole time. It was kind of weird where it was. So that was kind of interesting. Um, but again, it was an awesome match. I got to see a lot of guys. <coughs> and at this point that I noticed in my section, um, there was about, I, I'd say about 20 people there that were there primarily to see the CMLL guys. which I And, and you could definitely tell in the cheaper seats section, which were which the seats that were above us, um, which were went around the ring. And like I said, there was probably about 5,000 people there. Um, you definitely could see big groups of people who were really, who knew the CML guys, knew the chance, knew all of that, which isn't a big surprise given the Latino population in Houston and the fact that Lucha Libre does you know, pretty well in Houston. Uh, the NWA is drawn really well in Houston using Lucha Libre guys. So that's, so that was cool to see because you actually got to see some interaction with them. Um, like I said, the opening match was, was really great. Uh, Yoshino was mad over with people. People, it was funny because I'm sitting there, and of course I know who he is. And you had people who really didn't know who he is who were just calling him Speedster Guy. You know, and they were chanting, "Speed go, let's go Speedster, let's go Speedster, which was kind of funny. But was kind of cool at the same time. Because when I looked at him, I said, hey man, his name's Yoshino. And then they started chanting Yoshino. Um... 
like I said, just an awesome match. I couldn't believe how much time they gave gave it to him. Gave me a lot of hope for the pay-per-view. Um, enjoyed it fully. Though I started wondering if, if they kept that up, I wouldn't have a voice by the end of the pay-per-view. Uh, from there, we went to uh, Gail Kim versus Angelina Sky, I believe, is who she took over. Or was it Angelina Love? Ah, it was Angelina Love. And uh, that was okay. Um, you know, anything that went on after that, after the uh, the opener, was going to pale in comparison, I think. But um, it was <coughs> it was okay. Um, I don't know how well it came off on TV. I, I have a feeling it, prob- it, it seemed like the type of match that probably came off a little better on TV. Myself, when I was watching, I was thinking that because there was some stuff that you know you didn't get to see. You didn't get to see a lot of the inter- interaction with the outside stuff. So uh, that that was cool. Um, the match seemed to be very uh, end kind of weirdly. I don't know if that came off the same way or not. Um, so that was, you know, what it was, I would say. Um, again, it, the fans just were not into the match, and I, I think part of it was, even though they were, you know, they were into Gail Kim um, a lot, and they actually had ODB come out before the, the pay-per-view that lady is so freaking over, it's not even funny. It, it's different when you see how over somebody is live. She is mad over. Um, you know, Gail Kim, you know, she came out, she did her thing. Angelina Love. It's Angelina Love. She came out with Velvet Sky. And being the fact that she came out with them, you know, Velvet Sky was doing some, you know, heelish tactics, which I couldn't exactly see from my vantage point very well again. If they had put the stuff up on the screen, it'd be easier to see. Um, like I said, it seemed like an okay match. I don't know how well it came off on TV. Uh, most of us were pretty tired from the match before because it went for so long, and it was just it was sapping. You could just see the sap. Um, <coughs> of course, from there we went to um, the B G, the B G James, which I didn't really understand why B G James was there with the strap thing. I had, I don't know if they explained this on Impact and I missed it or whatever. But um, they had the guy, this, this is funny, I found this extremely funny. They, they introduced the guy who won the YouTube, the, the, the YouTube contest. And it was funny because I'm sitting there and all of these people are saying, he won? It wasn't the black guy? And I'm looking at him and I said, which black guy? And they start saying it was instant, instant classic, Brandon. And I was like, oh yes, yeah, so I know him. And so we started talking. They're like, yeah, I can't believe he didn't win. He did the best, you know, he did the best one. Particularly when in the promos... They really didn't show that guy, and they showed primarily uh, MB and Instant Classics. So I, I thought that was weird, and so did other everybody else. Everyone thought it would be either Instant or MB because that was the people they primarily showed, or the guy that was from Houston. I believe the guy in the white beater is actually from Houston. Uh, that was another guy a lot of people thought would win, not the guy that did. So, but more power to him. Um, so that was that was very interesting, I would say. Um, I'm not sure exactly if stuff was going on. During the pay-per-view, when I see the pay-per-view, I'll be able to know. There, there seemed to be a lot of dead time um, when we were watching it. That we we could do it know if there was stuff happening backstage or if they were just you know if Don West and Mike Tanay were talking again. Not seeing the what the people at home were seeing, you know, was kind of hurt a little bit. I would say so. Again, I'm going to bring that up a lot because it, it did get to the point where just people were talking about it. It was. It was that kind of thing where people were, you know, were saying, "Hey, why, why can't, why aren't we seeing what the people at home are seeing?" You know, because you do at a at a WWE event. So, um, then we had Black Machismo J Lethal versus the Guru Sanjay Dutt, and being there live, this match was a lot of fun. I don't know if I came across on television, but I was really surprised because people were actually torn between. Jay Lethal and Sanjay Dutt. Apparently, people like Sanjay Dutt. So, um, or, you know, they just really didn't care. Um, they just were, were going to destroy on both guys. <coughs> um, the match had some good spots. Um, again, it was a not, it was a fun match to watch live. Again, I'm not sure how, how well it came off on pay-per-view, but a lot of chanting going on, a lot of people chanting for both Jay Lethal and Sanjay Dutt. So that was kind of, that was kind of cool and a bit surprising at the same time. Um, you know, so... There was that. And then the miracle happened. Robert Roode 
gave forth the greatest promo I have ever seen him give. To the point, I turned to the guy next to me and said, Robert Roode gave a good promo, and the guy said, it's about freaking time. I mean, it was we were all kind of talking about it that were around. So it, it, that, that was very interesting um, and really got me excited for the strap match. I have no idea how this came off on television because, again, we didn't see the strapping part of it because I was too far away from the, script, from the ring. But um, it seemed like it came off like a, a lot of fun. Again, this was a fun match, I would say, um, just from where I was sitting. Uh, a lot of us were getting into it. We were laughing. We were, you know, we, we were enjoying what we were seeing. Um, oh, and uh, Salinas is about a hundred times hotter live. All right, I'll just say that right now. Good God, is she? Ah, oh, that was that was almost worth the trip. I'm gonna say, and she's tiny too. I was. Enough about that, though. I'm sure you guys don't want to hear about that. And of course, um, we had the the Booker and Houston thing, which was kind of strange, and I don't know how well that came off very well. Uh, we had Tyler Wilde versus Awesome Kong. Um, I don't know how well that came across, but Awesome Kong was definitely the more over. People actually wanted her to win the title back. Uh, the end of this with Abyss, um, where Abyss comes out and uh, was looked like he was going to go against Kong, and then he ended up, you know, beating up uh, her manager was what came live came across really well, and people were really into it, and I was really surprised. People really wanted to see Awesome Kong and Abyss go at it, and you got the feeling from people that they believed that, you know, she could hang with him, which I think says volumes about Awesome Kong. But, uh, I, you know, and, and that part really saved a dull match. It was a very dull match uh, because, you know, Kong needs somebody that, <coughs> that can actually kind of sell a lot, and uh, that really wasn't the case. Though, it's very interesting to watch. Women really like Awesome Kong. They really do. They go crazy for her, I noticed, which was kind of neat and kind of kind of interesting. I always kind of wondered how she how she was with women. Um, and, of course, guys just look at her and are like, dear God, she's awesome. Um, so that was that was kind of cool. Uh, then we had the Ultimate the World Cup Finals with the Ultimate X match. Um, again, I'm not sure how well it came off on the pay-per-view. Being there live, it, it, it seemed like a, a, a very good match, or a good match, I should say. I'm not the best Ultimate X match I've ever seen, but that doesn't didn't really surprise me given the fact that none of the, you know, you had one guy in, in Kaz who had been in one of these before. I don't think anybody else had. Uh, I was really surprised with Davari. I, I think he was he looked like he was looking for a job, and um, I think I think TNA could do a lot worse than him. He's the type of guy that I always have kind of complained that when they say, you know, the X Division guys uh, don't have enough personality, that here's a guy who definitely has personality, definitely was over with the fans. Um, so there was that. Uh, Doi wasn't very, you know, most people didn't know who Doi was, but he got over by the end of this. And then, uh, what is it, Balador Jr., the guy from CMML, he was mad. Over. Pe people who knew who he was, knew who he was, were chanting, you know, his chants, you could tell. Um, it was it was really cool. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, again, this, this was fun. It wasn't as great as, you know, I had hoped, but the, the as great as the opening match was, I really didn't mind. Um, the spot with... Uh, with Kaz off the top of the Ultimate X structure, destroying you know, destroying Davari was was, um, was crazy, crazy got people going nuts. Um, but it was fun, and again, you had a bunch of guys that weren't used to it. You could kind of tell that. So they did a lot of stuff that we've already seen. Very, very basic Ultimate X stuff is as stupid as that sounds, but there you go. Um, after that, uh, they did. They did some more stuff with uh, Booker T, and then we got the Full Metal Mayhem match. This match, again, I, I would imagine was better on TV than it was live, particularly since I there was a lot of stuff that happened that I didn't get to see. Though the dive off the top by Christian, uh, we all called, though we thought it was going to be AJ who did that. But again, it, it, this was a good match. Um, the Trig thing, of course, since we didn't know that Trig was 
the only reason I knew Trig was at ringside is because somebody way down at the end from up me, it kind of got to me that Trig was at ringside. So, <clears throat> again, another problem with them not showing what the people on TV were saying. Um, again, a, 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 a very, very good match in my opinion. A lot of fun. The fan, We were all into this. Um, you know, it wasn't you know, a paint-by-numbers match like we normally see. There was actually, even even though there was nothing, I would say, innovative about it, you don't have to have a bunch of innovative, you know, spots like this, but it it, it worked, and uh, we enjoyed it there live, so it, it seemed like a very, very good match, in my opinion. Um, and then, finally, you know, halfway through the paper, you know, near the end of the pay-per-view, finally we get a Joe promo, which we had gotten a bunch of Booker T promos, and, you know, I started wondering if people were seeing Joe promos at home and we weren't seeing them or what was going on. Um, you know, so so this led up to that and him telling uh, Kevin, no matter what happens, don't come out, that whole thing. We got a video package of Joe versus Booker that was really good. And then we got um, another promo of, of each guy got their own promo as they were being brought out, it, which I thought was a little much. I thought it was a little overkill. But that was just me. Uh, JB came out, did his little special uh, announcing thing, which does add something live to the main event. Um, I always thought it was just kind of a neat thing they did uh, watching the pay-per-views. But it really does work live, I thought. Um, what to say about this match? This, this was a match that I was like, well, maybe this, this looks like it's really going to be good at... Um, uh, this was really going to be good live or, or on pay-per-view because live we couldn't see the stuff that was going outside. People in my section and I'm sure people elsewhere couldn't exactly see what was going on live, which I think hurt the match a little bit. And I think it really hurt the, the venue. I, I think um, if if the crowd response didn't come through very well, a lot of times because we didn't know what was going on because we couldn't see what was going on around the ring. And so, again... The TV monitor. They they need to you know be showing the matches so that fans know what's going on. Um, again, it was this this was you know this was going along pretty good, and then the ending of 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 wow, this was bad. Particularly since I didn't talk about this um, when we got there and we're sitting there, and they I'm sure you guys saw the the intro that they filmed with uh, JB. Um, Vince Russo is the guy that came out, and people were giving Vince Russo a hard time. And I actually got to walk up to him and shake his hand and say, "Hey, man," he goes, "Don't let him, you know, don't let him get to you. You guys have been doing good as of late." And he thanked me. And then they put on this. Um, the ending. Most of us didn't even know what was going on. It was just like, "What the hell is this?" It, it was very strange. Um, people were 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 booing very loudly. Um, some people were 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 chanting bullshit. Um, it was just, it was, it was, you know, I mean, I mean, this match really could have made this pay-per-view someone special, but it, it ultimately hurt it really bad, I think. Uh, this, this was, you know, this was like a better version, this was like hard justice if certain matches were better, where the really good matches were really good, were even better than they were at hard justice last year. And the main event was even worse. That, 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 that is what this was. That's what I felt like watch, you know, watching it live. Um, though I didn't feel the same way. I didn't feel as mad as when I watched Hard Justice. I was just kind of like, eh, hey, what was this? But um, <clears throat> I don't know what doing an ending like that really does. You know, when, when, I, when I booked my version of Victory Road, you know, I, I purposely didn't put Booker T versus Joe for this reason. And a lot of people said, yeah, but Booker, it's Booker's hometown. I think everybody probably saw that Booker was mad over. He's always been mad over in Houston, even when he was a heel. Um, you know, they, they always cheer for him. You had a lot of people there that were definitely Booker fans, and I definitely think were people that probably had uh, been to his, his shows in Pasadena. That's where his... his his school is actually Pasadena. That's where they put on the shows. Just so you know, um, Pasadena, Texas. They, um, which is right outside of Houston. They, um, so I, I, I you know, I was always kind of worried about this. The match just felt like, what the hell was that? Even though I think it worked up until the point of it was up until they no finished it. And when they no finished it, I, I, I think it got, you know, it got 
really crazy, and the Sting thing was stupid. Um, the, you know, it was just stupid. That's what it was. It was just stupid. But people didn't seem to like it, although they did like seeing Sting. Um, this is the type of thing, though, that, you know, you had a pretty good crowd, I would say. Not a great crowd, but a pretty good crowd. And I, I think, you know, it makes you wonder if people are going to be willing to spend their money again. Because I want to be honest, TNA tickets are expensive. Um, they're not cheap, which... You know, I understand that. I don't mind that, but they're not cheap. And them to do a bullshit finish like this really does leave a bad taste in my mouth. And I'm sure it left a bad taste in other people's mouths as well. Um, not to the point like when I did my my Nitro review. It wasn't that bad because there was good stuff on this card, and this and the main event was good. I felt until we got to the bullshit ending, and then the bullshit ending kind of killed it. So you know, I, I would hope. If TNA ever comes back, we don't get that again. Um, I would imagine they would come back, given that you know this is Booker's hometown, and and they did seem to draw pretty well. I mean, this this is the first time they've ever been uh, to Houston, or even close to Houston. Um, and when even when they came to Texas last year, uh, or I guess earlier this year, they didn't even come close to Houston. So this is the first time they've actually been close to Houston. Um, and they drew, you know, like I said, probably about 5,000. They probably sold, they, the ticket sold, were probably, I wouldn't be surprised if it were better than what was actually there, like I said, because of the scalpers. So I definitely think they made money. Um, when, I, when I was up buying stuff at the kiosk, it was evident that people were spending money. Um, the, at least the, the, the people that I noticed ahead of me were, you know, it was, they were spending about at least around $100, I would say. So that's, that's not too shabby um, because that's, you know. If, if you know anything about the business side of it, uh, you know, the, the merchandise is where you make a good portion of your money at a live event. So, there is that. Um, overall, it, it was a good experience. I'm not going to say it was horrible because I didn't feel it was horrible. I, I wasn't totally pissed off when I left. I, I just felt very bummed when I left because of the main event because I felt like this could have been really, really good if it wasn't for the main event. <clears throat> Being there live, so I would say it was a good show live. I, ha I had fun. Um, I felt like, you know, the, main, the, the the opening contest was worth seeing it. And me being in the ROH park, I'm just going to say this. Watching it made me want March to get here that much faster. I'm just going to be honest. Because I was watching it going, oh my dear God, this is awesome. Um, but that's it that, for my first uh, TNA, you know, experience live. Like I said, I thought it was a good live show. You know, just seeing it as a pay-per-view and the live pay-per-views I've seen, you know, it was okay. Um, the main event really hurt it, or it could have, like I said, it could have been something really special that wasn't for the main event, I felt, as far as being there live. Um, not probably the home run that I have, you know, I always feel that when the first time you, you run a city and you put on a major show in a city, you really need to try to put on a home run and doing the sports entertainment thing in a, in a city like Houston, which is a big wrestling city, and then you turn around and, and you do a finish like this, always kind of, uh, you know, even if it wasn't in Houston, if you did this, if, 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 there, if this was their first major show in Philly or New York or Chicago or St. Louis or, you know, the list could go on and on. I, I think that just you can't be doing that in those cities, in the big wrestling markets, because those are the markets that you do kind of have to win, win over. Um, so, but that's just me, and I'm not in the business, so what do I know, right? Anyways, uh, that's all I have to say. Um, I'll probably actually do a pay-per-view pay review tomorrow after I've watched the, uh, after I've watched the pay-per-view. Uh, see the things I missed, see if there were things I enjoyed more. Maybe I didn't like as much after I see it on pay-per-view. I don't know. But um, we'll see. Uh, again, um, the opener was amazing. Um, you know, uh, Full Metal Mayhem or whatever it is they call they call that was, was really good, uh, I felt. Um, I had a lot of fun watching that. Um, and everything else except for the main event I, I thought was, well, except for the... the Knockouts tag match I thought was at least passable for a live show. Like I say, Gail Kim and Angelina Love, I think they were just in a bad spot. Um, I, I didn't think the match was horrible. That I didn't think it was 
the fans just weren't into it, and I think it's because they were tapped, so totally tapped out by the opener. But I, I don't think I think everything else on the card either came off fun, which is good, and I think to me if a f- match is fun and came off uh, or came off you know acceptable and and, and, and people were, were really really into the pay-per-view I would say up until the main event and then you could just feel the the, the air I mean people just kept wanting something to happen at the end of the pay-per-view it, it, it was that's how it was so anyways um, that's it um, hope you guys enjoyed this got to go on a, a little bit of an extra rant due to the fact of you know me being able to go longer now so I was able to get a little more detailed uh, tomorrow I will be doing like I said should be tomorrow I will I will do a real pay-per-view review, review of this but I didn't want to come on here and uh, and kind of talk about what I saw and, and what I didn't see and, and it, was, it was definitely interesting to see live I, I will say that it was it was it was different. Um, I definitely think that you know you can see you can see and, even, and in fact it makes you know watching TNA a little more more frustrating because I, I think really they're they are onto something like I said the 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 crowd was a lot younger and when I mean a lot younger I mean a lot younger than what like I, like WWE or even the one ECW show I've been to um, any any pretty much any wrestling. I've ever been to in in Houston, the crowd was a lot younger, um, so that was that was a little different. I will admit. But anyways, um, that is that, and um, I'll check you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If not, I'm sorry if I bored you all this time. But um, have a good one. I'm out later.